Hey guys, my name is Tom from 3D Focus and welcome to the MLight build video tutorial. Um, first off, I wanted to thank everybody who ordered or shown any kind of support or interest or um, gave us ideas on what to improve and change um, to all the people on the Facebook group um, because there has been a lot of good ideas there and if you aren't in the Facebook group you should join it now. Um, anyways, that's the thank you. Um, I also have a little disclaimer and that's this build, we're, we're not responsible if you break your camera or break any part of the camera in this build. Nothing is made to require pressure, uh, be it pulling stuff, pushing stuff in, screwing stuff down. If something takes too much force or any kind of significant force, stop, check the thing you're doing check that everything is correct um, and if it's still hard to do ask me just send me an email and we can take a look over it and, and make sure we prevent um, doing any permanent damage to your camera or its parts um, there's some pieces like plastic parts getting into plastic parts that might require you to kind of click it in but nothing around the ribbons nothing like that shouldn't take any kind of force uh, you're risking ripping ribbons or, or breaking something. Um, there's going to be four or something replacement ribbons uh, for the buttons and there's going to be also some for the screen on my store in case you do break something you can go there and just order it for, for basically buying price. I'm not making any profit off of that. Um, there's two more things. Uh, first thing is I hope the video is understandable, I hope it makes sense and um, I try to make it kind of short but at the same time make sure it describes everything that's very important. Um, so hopefully it fulfilled that purpose and if you have any questions or anything you can ask me on Facebook and you can also ask in the comments of this video. So yeah, good luck with the build and I hope it all goes well and perfect and you have an M light soon. Alright, bye. So what do you get in the box? You get this little set of keys and the little plastic piece is also a key. Um, you get two buttons, one black, one red. They have like a little notch. You get a battery defeat lever, a quarter 20 screw and an LCD extension ribbon. And if you order it, you're gonna get a dummy battery and this shortened um, cable for the dummy battery. You're also gonna get the M Light body itself with the Noctua fan, the HDMI extension, and the audio jack extension pre installed inside of it. Um, it comes with all the panels attached. Mine doesn't have the quarter 20s, ignore that. Yours is gonna have the threaded inserts on there. Here's the cheese plate. Um, you're gonna have a serial number on that little plate. Now, if you ordered the angle screen and sun hood mod, um, you're gonna get this piece with the frame attached and four screws. You're gonna get the sun hood with the logo debossed. And you're gonna get an extra frame um, with magnets. Now, that's gonna be either attached already or not, I'm not sure yet. And what's not included is a small Phillips screwdriver and a piece of non-conductive tape that we're going to use later to secure the button's ribbon in place. So, that's everything you get in the box, so let's get straight into the build. You're going to need to take your EOS M. Um, this is mine, I've, it's battered up, it's got the front grip removed, but that doesn't matter, you don't actually need to remove that piece. Um, so ignore that as well. You're gonna need the Phillips screwdriver we talked about. And uh, a tray for screws and pieces is handy as well. So we start off at the port side. Um, there's three screws you need to remove. Um, there's one at the top, there's one behind the port flap, and there's one 
at the bottom right there. You need to unscrew them and the whole thing should just pop off. It might be harder, you need to maybe pry it off with like a flat head. Um, mine just popped off like that. And that's the two pieces you're gonna get out of it. You can put them off to the side. Now there's one more thing on that side. Those two screws you don't need to remove. You need to remove the one at the bottom and that's it. Then you're done. So make sure the three screws are removed and remove the one at the bottom. That's the last thing holding it together and you're done. So on the other side um, you have two screws. Again Phillips. Just unscrew them. That should also just pop off. Um, I don't think they use double-sided tape on that or any kind of glue, so it should be fairly easy. And you're gonna start seeing that it's prying apart slightly. Now, at the bottom, next to the quarter 20, there's two screws. Now, next to the quarter 20, there's two screws on the side of the LCD that you need to remove. The other two can be kept in. And then next to the record button, there's this little rubber grip thing. Um, that needs to be removed but that is stuck on with double-sided tape or some kind of glue. On mine it was easy because I previously removed it and there's a hidden screw behind that that you need to remove. And now you can just start prying it off. Be extremely careful because there's a ribbon that's going to be attached to the buttons and you really don't want to tear that ribbon. Now here's a shot of Cole's camera um, so you can just see where the ribbon attaches and there might or might not be some tape over that holding that down I'm not 100% sure if there is tape carefully just peel it off Now on the other side of that frame. There's one more screw that's holding the buttons down. So you just unscrew that and That will allow you to just pop the buttons out You might need to remove the buttons from the frame like on this video but uh, as you could see on Cole's camera, they just came out themselves without the frame. Next up, we have the screen. And the screen has these two ribbons with pull-up um, covers like this. You just click them out of place. Be careful, they can be fragile. You can break them off and then your camera is toast. So just be very, very careful. And once both of them are free, um, there's a specific way in which you need to slide out the screen like to the side like I'm doing and then it just pops off and you're done with the screen. So after we removed everything we're gonna need to remove the actual battery cover door. Um, there's two screws again Phillips and just unscrew them. This little metal plate is gonna come off and that big plastic piece is gonna come off as well. Now this is to ensure it being possible to take out the SD card um, as with that you'd have to open it and there just wasn't space. Uh, you can take all of the stuff and put it in a box for later in case you want to reassemble the camera. Now if you want some extra leeway in the build, now I'm not 100% sure but it might work without it, but you need to cut these little tabs, there's two of them, like little plastic tabs covering a ribbon and be very very careful do not cut into the ribbon. Um, you then heat the whole plate up with a hairdryer and you can peel the glue off and that will give you another few millimeters of, of extra leeway um, to later play around with. Next up, take the Allen key set um, you're gonna take the middle-sized Allen key, take out these four screws at the front. You got the front plate off. And then we look from the side, and this is the port cover plate. With the and you need to remove the four uh, stainless steel screws with the Torx sc screwdriver, and that has like a specific shape to it, so. It's not a classic hex head one, so yeah. That's the plate removed with the four torque screws. 
and now you're gonna need to um, take out uh, the ribbon and the uh, audio jack extensions they're hidden in there just for transport sake but you can just leave them to the side like this now depending on the way you want to power your camera there's a little place where you can put a cable through inside the camera you need to take out these eight screws you can take off the cheese plate and by the way there's the air tag pocket on the top behind the cheese plate then you have the Noctua fan inside and you have a routing slot which we can use here and there's also a revision number um, now when you're prying that off be careful and try to kind of jimmy it out of the way like that it might need you to um, get the cable out of the way there to make it a little easier there we go and here you can see the slot where um, you can put the uh, 5 volt to DC adapter um, if it's the correct size like that um, that's how our fits in and then on the front there's a little slot that you can see um, that will allow you to put the cable in something like this kind of route it around and make sure it's not bending too crazy. Now on the back there's this slot where you can route the cable through like so. That's the top one and then the bottom one you put the fan in something like that. This has to carefully be put on and you can screw everything together and you have two USB cables on the back now and this can also be covered up at this point next are again four Torx stainless steel screws at the top around the screen frame Again, same driver as on the port side. And then again, same driver, same screws, the control plate, the button plate on the other side. So, next up, we need to take the camera, the ribbon and take the ribbon with the contacts at the bottom. Here you can see the gold pins need to be at the bottom with the white line facing you, so facing up. And you need to push it in till it kind of clicks and you will see that when you close the ribbon, the little lever like this, it should be aligned. Mine isn't perfect but it actually does work. Next up we have the buttons and the tape. Uh, the tape will be used to secure the ribbon into the connector. Now you need to take the frame, uh, push the LCD extension through that. Now this is very important uh, and be very careful with it because the ribbon can be fragile and you're gonna need to push the ribbon through the right top button which was previously the play button. Um, so you push it through that. If you want to, you can use some of the tape to kind of hold it down so it doesn't tear and it stays in place. Uh, like I'm doing here. Just kind of stick it over that. Um, as that point is very fragile. Um, you then need to connect it with the contacts facing downwards. So the gold pins facing downwards. Connect it up stick the tape over it just so it stays in place and you don't uh, push it out accidentally and put the whole thing back on now at this point do a visual check of the on off button on the top it should look something like it does on my camera it should click fine and you're good and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put in the dummy battery which you need to do and then the battery defeat lever which is this it has the little notch pointing out you point that downwards 
and you slide it in. Um, you do not want it to look like this, to be angled, it needs to be sitting flat. Now, we're gonna test the camera works. You do not need to do this, but I highly recommend it. So, contacts down again, push the LCD, click it down, uh, and then you can test it out. Press the on off, you see it's blinking, the screen comes on, you can try pressing some buttons, um, see if they work like they worked before. Um, now I'm gonna unplug it again, because I tested and the camera worked and let's get into it. So you need to take your button. The button has a little notch that goes into a slot on the body. Uh, I took some tape and taped over the little metal piece from the battery there just so it stays in place and makes it easier. And this is what you have right now. And we're gonna put that inside. So the LCD extension needs to get put into this long hole and pushed up. And it'll go up here. And then the buttons have to go through that little, that, that big hole opening at the side. The camera goes in at an angle. First is the left side when you're looking at it like that, next to the Canon logo. And then kind of bends in place or, or like folds in place. Uh, make sure this is closed, by the way, so it doesn't get stuck on anything. And you can start pushing that in up that little slot and you're gonna see it's inside there. Just make sure it's going in, it's not dragging or anything, it's it's in the correct place. And I'm gonna take my buttons very carefully so I don't break the ribbon. I'm gonna just kinda push them through the opening at the side. So they go all the way out. Again, be very careful with the ribbon, this is the most um, easy to mess up part. That's the button ribbon, and then the camera just kind of falls in perfectly. And the first thing you want to do is take the buttons, put them in place, and cover it with the plate. So you kind of cover it up with the place, it kind of stays in, it's designed to stay in. Next. You take the quarter 20 and a little plastic tool to tighten it. Now, after screwing it down, you want to test the button and see if it clicks properly. Like that. Um, if it doesn't, try to wiggle the camera around a little bit. It might be sitting at an angle. Um, we then connect the HDMI and the 3.5 extension. And there's a little cutout for the 3.5 cable that the cable needs to be put in um, so you don't damage it in any way. You can screw that down. You can screw down the buttons at that point as well. Test that they all click properly. And that should be centered, just like that. Uh, we can put on the front plate, again, for uh, countersunk screws. Test the button again, see if it clicks properly. Now we're gonna install the screen. If you have the angle screen, it's gonna be shown later in this video. Um, if you don't, here's how to install the normal screen. There's a little cutout for the cable, for the ribbons, for the yellow part um, that that goes in. And you just kind of um, push it in till it sits perfectly flat. Uh, try to apply, if you are if you need to apply force, uh, apply it as flat as possible so you don't damage the screen. You connect the ribbon. Kind of push it back into the slot for it. And click this on. 
bolted down. And that's everything. That's the build finished. Um, there's nothing else you need to do. You can just go out and start shooting and making some awesome content with this camera. And I seriously cannot wait to see what you guys come up with and how you rig it up and how you play around with it. Now, if you have the angled screen mod, you need to take this piece, unscrew the four screws, so we have both of the frames free. And you need to take the four screws from the frame that you took out of the camera if it wasn't mounted on it. I'm not sure if I'll mount it on yet. Now you put the rim through and you need to first off put the four screws to mount the angled mod onto the camera before the screen frame. You can then pick which frame you want to use. There's going to be one frame with magnets and one frame without. And make sure you're not using the frame that was attached to the camera body itself. It's the thinner one, the one on the right side. Um, you don't want to use that. So you then just plug in the ribbon like before. And just bolt everything down carefully. And that's it, that's your angled screen mod attached and ready to go. Hey guys, so you're at the end of your build. Hopefully everything went well, your camera is built up, everything works. Um, again, if there's any questions, ask me in the comments, ask me on the Facebook group, I'm gonna answer to every single question I see. So. That's that. And one last thing I didn't mention, but you get a pack of Haribos in your order. I hope you ate them as a reward and not at the beginning, which is exactly what I would do. Uh, I hope the camera serves you well, and I cannot wait to show you what other stuff we have planned for the M-Lite. Alright, take care. Bye.